Hello, this is SciShow News. I'm Hank Green. We have some catching up to do, so let's get right to it, starting out with a newly discovered dinosaur that I'm kind of afraid to look at. Also, a way to sequence your genome in less time than it takes to get your clothes dry cleaned. And finally, two new adventures that will take place in space, one going up and the other going down fast. So stow your tray tables, because SciShow News is taking off. First, a riddle for you. What has two legs, fangs, and is covered with quills? Last week, I would have said a porcupine vampire, but on Wednesday, paleontologist Paul Sereno said that the actual answer is this thing. Its name is Pegamastax africanus, a newly discovered species of dwarf dinosaur that roamed the Earth some 200 million years ago. The only known fossil of Pegamastax, who I'm going to now just start calling Peggy, was actually excavated in southern Africa in the 1960s, but it spent the past 50 years languishing in a collection at Harvard University until Sereno rediscovered it. I love when stuff like this happens. Peggy is a kind of heterodontosaur, a group of two-legged cat-sized dinosaurs notable for their large canine teeth and coats of weird quill-like bristles, which might have been an early form of feathers. Despite its fearsome fangs, Sereno said that Peggy was probably an herbivore that used its teeth for defense and to compete for mates. You can read all about it in the links below. Second, I wanted to weigh in on probably the biggest science news of the past week. You probably heard that a team of physicists in Japan had created a new element, element 113, in their lab. You loyal SciShow News viewers will recall that I said that a team of US and Russian scientists did the same thing a few months ago, so why is this news? Well, they did it in different ways, and now an international team of experts has to decide who gets credit for it. The Russian lab managed to create a whole bunch of element 113, by which I mean a couple of dozen atoms, by first firing a bunch of calcium atoms, each with 20 protons, into the element americium, with 95 protons. This created element 115, which has 115 protons with 20 plus 95 is 115. See, now element 115, that quickly decayed into 113. So the Russian lab was actually able to make both of them, although fleetingly. But the Japanese team took another approach. They took a hunk of bismuth, element 83, and bombarded it with ions of zinc, element 30, to create for a few milliseconds element 113. Of course, it took nine years of constant bombardment to create what ended up being only three or four atoms of the stuff. But while the Russian lab was able to make it by creating something heavier that decayed into it, the Japanese team managed to create element 113 from scratch. So who gives the credit? Well, that call is up to the organization that designates new elements, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Whichever team ends up getting the nod will have the honor of naming the new element. And might I suggest, I've been working on this for a while now, Hankium. <laughs> Next, two new breakthroughs that have taken place inside your genome that you didn't even know about. First, you know about the Human Genome Project, the historic decade-long effort that mapped all of our coding and non-coding DNA. Much of what we learned from that project wasn't quite what we expected, but we did learn that sequencing genomes is really hard, time-consuming, expensive, and painstaking. Until now. Doctors at Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City announced Wednesday that they have developed a new technology that can sequence and analyze a person's individual genome in two days. The new technology, called SSAGA, was developed specifically for newborn infants with critical illnesses. Using a new super amped up computer platform, SSAGA can sequence an infant's genome from a drop of blood and then compare it with a healthy genome. If mutations are found, a diagnosis can be made and treatments can begin all within 50 hours. Among four newborns in Mercy Hospital's intensive care unit, the new technology correctly detected genetic conditions in three of them. The doctors say that by the end of the year, they expect to have the whole process whittled down to just 36 hours. Speaking of genomes, you know a month hardly goes by with Without me talking about Neanderthals, our dearly departed fellow human subspecies with whom we shared this world, and whose DNA we are still carrying around today. It's been known for a while that our ancestors mated with Neanderthals, but until this week it wasn't exactly clear when and where this interspecies boot knocking took place. Like, did it happen way, way back in the day when both Neanderthals and modern humans were still in Africa? Or did these prehistoric two ships passing in the night encounters happen after we had already started to colonize the world? Well, yesterday, a team of geneticists at Harvard University 
University said that it was able to measure the length of Neanderthal DNA and our genes to determine just how long it's been there. And they found that modern humans last exchanged genes, if you know what I mean, with Neanderthals between 37,000 and 86,000 years ago, well after we modern humans left Africa, but before we started spreading across Eurasia. This might explain why Neanderthal genes appear in pretty much every population on Earth today, but they're most common outside of Africa. And now you know where to put that caveman in your family tree. Finally, I wanted to tell you about a couple of exciting events that are about to happen in, or at least near, space. First up, you'll remember when we covered the first launch of SpaceX Corporation's mission to the International Space Station back in May. After some delays, the unmanned Dragon spacecraft successfully delivered its non-essential supplies to the crew of the ISS. But the whole thing was basically a dry run. On Sunday, however, SpaceX is scheduled to launch its first official This Is Not A Drill Resupply mission, carrying about 450 kilograms of materials to the ISS, including materials for 63 new science experiments. The Dragon capsule will return with some 320 kilos of completed scientific experiments on human biology and biotechnology, plus another couple hundred kilos of hardware. The launch of the Falcon 9 rocket is slated for this Sunday, October 7th at 8.35 p.m. Eastern Time in the U.S., with the rendezvous with the ISS to take place Wednesday. You can watch it yourself online at NASA TV, tune in, and think of the good times we had together in May. And second, a man will attempt something on Monday that's been on my reverse bucket list. That is something that I never, ever, 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 ever want to do for as long as I live. But I'm glad that someone's doing it. Austrian thrill seeker Felix Baumgartner is going to attempt the world's highest and fastest skydive, and in the process, maybe the first person to break the sound barrier in free fall. A giant helium balloon will carry Baumgartner in a custom made capsule to an altitude of nearly 37 kilometers over New Mexico, where he will jump wearing a pressurized suit, and if all goes to plan, he'll reach the sound barrier in only 30 seconds and will free fall for four and a half more minutes before deploying his parachutes. Now the stun is being billed as the first jump from near space, but to be all facty about it, our atmosphere actually meets space around 100 kilometers up. But still, planners say that the dive will help collect data that could be valuable in emergency planning for space missions, including evacuations of craft at extreme altitudes. All I can say is better him than me, but you can totally watch the live stream at the links below. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow News. If you want to keep updated with all that's going on in the world of science, you can go to youtube.com slash SciShow show and subscribe. If you have any questions, ideas, or comments for us, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and of course, down in the comments below. We'll see you next time.